Stay tuned for polls. That was a jump scare. Am I going crazy with that one? Sir, what does that mean? This is such a mess. I can't make that up. What if we chuck watermelons at them? Oh, look at that. Let her get up. Let her get up. Okay, we did something right. Hit it. Go stupid, go crazy. Weird. My OBS didn't want to record for a second. Um, anyways, hello friends and gamers. We are playing PGR today. We're gonna do the Reveries with a Whale story again. However, I was looking around in the game after I stopped playing last night because I was doing my dailies and I was opening up stuff in my inventory and I, I, I noticed these, these uniform single crystals. I have 1000. So I'm assuming we got these with the update. Unsure, right? But it says uniframe single crystals can be used to exchange for uniframes. So the three polls I did on the pool out banner didn't need to happen, I guess. Um, I'm going to buy one and see what happens. Just one. It's 15 of these crystals. Now, what does it do? If I go to my uniframes, right? What does it do? How many of the crystals do I need? Because if you go to obtain, how do you, the shards are only from research. I'm so confused. What does it do? So I'm going to go my inventory now. I'm going to look for this specific one. Used as a material in Dragon Toll's power modification. A crystal component that records massive battle data and greatly improves the Uniframe's battle performance. So how do these work? This is technically like update stuff, right? So let's go to Selena. I have Selena, right? We go to train. She uses regular EXP pods. Evolve, you need shards. What are these for? Because everything else, like, she uses regular skill points. Like, what are these for? It's not for coatings, is it? I'm like, what are these for? I'm so confused, y'all. What is going on? I was like, yes, I have her full memory set, but it's not leveled because I don't use Transcendence too frequently in my game. So it's, it's there, but I don't really use it. Same thing with Roland. Um, anyways, what is the crystal for? I'm so confused. We're going to move on because I will be here forever questioning it. Um, I have a, a chore is done. Uh, then the next ones will be done in 14 minutes. I'll probably be in the middle of the game at the time, but what does my dorm want from me? Nothing. It wants nothing. Sometimes it does that. The little notification thing will pop up and it wants nothing from me. So I still don't think we can do a poll for Pulau. We might be able to. 2.30. Oh, I'm five short. I am five black cards short. That is ridiculous. Okay. Well, we figured out kind of with the crystals don't get you the character. I thought they did for a second. I got really excited, but they don't. So... Curiosity has been quelled. Back to Reveries with a Whale. We have part two, like the second chunk of the story we did. What is this even called? Error report? What are these called? I forget what they're specifically called. Event record. I got that entirely wrong. I did not get a single word in that right. Event record stage zero, zero. We did one through three. In this video, I'm thinking we'll do four, five, and six, because I then think there'll be three more to do at the end. So we'll do the middle chunk today. If it ends up being really short, we'll probably go farther unsure, but we're going to do the middle chunk, starting with stage four, which is called an insurmountable ridge. I don't remember what we were doing last time, um, but doing this one stage will give me the black cards I need to do another poll. So we can do a poll at the end of this. Stay tuned for polls. Oh, I need serum. I used all my serum. I did that. Listen, I did. I used up all my serum and then I realized, oh, I need that in about 15 minutes to record a video. So obviously I did a great job there, uh, but I have a lot of extra serum here and some of it expires in the next couple of days. So we will crack into that now. There we go. Haha, <laughs> funny number. Yes. Battle prep. A singular pulau. Let's hit it. I have to read. Oh my God. I wasn't expecting to see the creepy guys. That was a jump scare. That was a jump scare. There might have been not been a creepy noise with it, but that was a jump scare. Anyways, our new dudes, our new friends, uh, it got really creepy. I don't remember it being this weird at the end of the last bit, but our new friend asks, have you heard of the news? What news? The other one, his friend, is our friend's friend says, of course, everybody has been talking about it lately because she was asking everywhere. Oh, okay. So this is, like, I guess, how they're doing the time jump because it looks like there's a bit of a time jump. It's been so many years. Who would have thought that someone would still want to look for the big fish? So I guess it's not a huge time jump, but it probably is a couple of days now that Pulau has been asking everyone she can find, where is the big fish? I'm surprised she went up to these guys though, because they freak me out. I wouldn't, I'd run the other way. Our first friend says, I heard it's a little girl this time. So this has, this has happened before. Oh, our friend's friend, Fred, our friend's friend's friend says, no one gets to look for the big fish. This guy scares me a little bit more. He has no eyes. 
Well, I guess he has eye center here, maybe. I don't know. Our first friend says, that means we have work to do again. And I, I'm calling them friends because it makes me feel like maybe they won't kill us. Our second friend says, we're going to be busy. And our third friend says, same old thing. So this has definitely happened before. Whoever wants to look for the big fish must, must come here first. Rumor has it that she'll be arriving in a few days. Ah. Uh, send the guys to watch every single junction. Use the code words if there is a situation. Was our tour guide involved with that? I don't think so. He couldn't have been. Roger. From our, maybe both of our first and second friends. And we're back to Pulau. She made it to the city. She says, wow, this city looks great. It does look really nice. Like the rendering on the background here. Steeped in the scent of jasmine tea, the town welcomes a young guest early in the morning. Ah, it does look kind of like muggy though, which is fun. Pulau sees the waiters, wearing undershirts and draped with towels, walk out of the stuffy tea room to the mouth of the alley for a bowl of fermented bean milk. Wouldn't that just be like soy milk? Am I going crazy with that one? Anyways, the sound of rattle drums reverberates through the alley. The refurbished bricks and stones could not contain the intoxicating aroma of the wine to be... The wine? No, I've done that before. The wine behind them. I, for some reason, my brain wants to add a D to the end of wine. I don't know why. That's a whole other word with an entirely different meaning. Pulau follows the waiters out of the alley and is immediately lost in countless breakfast stalls. She gulps and goes to ask an old man who is shaking the rattle drum and selling sour prune drink. Okay. <laughs> she says, excuse me, can I have a bowl of sour prune drink, please? Pulau, do you have money? Like, there's little things on your belt that'll be like coins in there. I don't know. The old man lifts his eyes and makes a bowl of sour prune drink for Pulau. Sizing her up. This is a child, sir. But she will kick your butt, so. The old man says, you look familiar. Have we met before? Oh. Did she used to live here, maybe? That would make sense. She says, huh? You must have mistaken me for someone else. It's my first time here. Do you know where the dock is? I don't know if she's done this entire bit before, but she's definitely like used to live here or something. The old man says, fine. The dock is on D 4th Street. You're on G 6th Street. Keep walking north until you go past the overhead bridge. Turn left when you see the largest dragon child pillar, then walk till the end. Yeah, isn't she one of the dragon children or something? Pulau says, all right, thank you, sir. And Pulau takes the prune drink and sips at it. It's gonna make her remember something because a lot of times with like smells and tastes, are, like those trigger, me trigger memories. The old man says, no worries. You're a kid with good manners. Way better than that smooth talking guy. <laughs> is that the guy, our tour guide? I don't know. We don't, we, Pulau doesn't know either. This guy just said that unprompted, you know, don't elaborate. I don't want to know. We'll probably run into him later. The old man says, forget about it. Then the old man starts to shake his rattle drum again, looking away toward the north. He asks, what do you think about this place? Not bad, isn't it? Oh, he's going to trigger something in the back of our mind. Even if it doesn't happen now, it's going to happen like 10 minutes from now or something. Pula says, right, it feels very lively. And the old man says, almost too lively. Sir, what does that mean? That scares me, especially because there's a virus going around. Yeah, Pulau just says, hmm, me, I would too. He probably mumbled it too. The old man says, do you know why there are breakfast stalls on both sides of the alley? Because people are going both ways to work and they're just going to go to the one that's on like the clear side of the road. I've done that. The old man suddenly changes the topic. He looks back at his own stall, asking Pulau with a smile. She says, not really, why? It's for convenience, I bet. The old man says, back in the old days, all the stalls were together and people always fought for trivial matters. Some argued that tofu pudding must be salty. Others claimed nobody wanted salty tofu pudding. The conflicts never ended. So they put them on the opposite side of the street so people would stop beefing with each other at seven in the morning. Understandable. Have a nice day. To reduce the conflicts, yep, the stalls were separated based on their flavors. I think that is understandable. Honestly, I've seen people beef at seven in the morning. We've all been in high school. Um, yeah, people beef at seven in the morning. People living in this busy city all have their own stresses. A little conflict is enough to detonate them. True, yeah. Even if the problem that causes the conflict is so trivial. Yeah, you see that all the time. Because it's usually people get angry not because of one singular thing. It's usually like an amalgamation and buildup of things. And so like if you had a bad night, you didn't sleep, you go get your breakfast in the morning and there's some dude in your ear like, that's disgusting. And it's like your favorite food in the world. I can see that. We've all been there. Is it the best way to cope with anger? No, but we've all been there. The old man says, I have said a lot. It's been a while since someone was willing to listen to my nagging. These grubs are for you. Oh, he gave us food. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of hungry too. Not even gonna lie. 
I'll probably have lunch after this. Not even, not gonna lie about that one either. The old man says, get yourself some watermelon when you arrive at the overhead bridge. That's the best thing on a summer day like this. Okay, so before it was spring. So have we transitioned this into summer? Has that much time gone by? I don't know. You can't say you have visited this town without trying the watermelon. Oh, cute. And we're back to our friends. Great. Friend number three says, this is a perfect opportunity. Have we cleared the way to the dock? I'm gonna have to fight them in this stage, but friend one or two, unsure, says, accept the auntie selling watermelon. Oh no, not the auntie. Friend number two, three, this is number three, says, hmm, yeah, please don't take out the auntie. She did nothing wrong. She's just selling her wares. Yeah, see, look, friend number three says, she has heart problems. We shouldn't get her involved. Don't, she's just an old lady selling watermelon. Move out when the girl is off the overhead bridge. You're gonna jump her when she has the watermelon? That is perfectly good watermelon. At least let her finish it first. Friend number one and or two says, got it. God, this is such a mess. Back to Pulau, she's probably buying her watermelon. She says, the people here are so friendly and welcoming. I only wanted a few slices, but she gave me so many. Look, the old lady who was selling watermelon gave her extra watermelon because she's just this cute little kid doo -doo -doo, on her way looking for the big fish. And you're going to jump her with her watermelon. That is so messy. That is, don't do that. That's rude. After bidding farewell to the old man, Pulau headed toward the dock. Just like he said, he saw an old woman selling watermelon on the overhead bridge. Is nobody going to question that she's the only one on the bridge and why? She just wanted a few slices for a taste. But when the old woman saw her grubs, she gave Pulau two baskets without hesitation. Pulau had to put It's a Sword on her back and carry one basket on each hand on her way to the dock. I like how she still just calls it like, It's a Sword. She says, she seemed very nostalgic when she looked at the signs on the grubs. What are our grubs? Is that like coins or what? Unsure. That must be why the old man gave us the grubs though, because he knew if she saw them, we'd get extra watermelon. Look at this old man. Sometimes old people are good. Pula says, they must have had some stories. And then she says, it says, oops, so I'm assuming she dropped something. Watch out, it says an, uh, an unassuming voice. Just when Pulau gets off the bridge and walks under the dragon child pillar, a muscular man rushes out from the corner. Oh, there's chaos. Oh, it's one of our friends. Uh, this is one or two. I'm not sure. Again, he says, ouch, are you all right? Yeah, you know, um, this is planned. Pula says, I'm OK. My watermelons, they are fine, too. Gotta worry about the watermelons all the time. What about you? Are you hurt? And friend one and or two says, I'm all right. Sorry. Gotta go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Pula says he's gone so fast. This is so like, isn't your job now to jump her and you're just running away? I mean, understandable. She's a child. I wouldn't want to jump her either. But like, she says must be in a hurry. Uh, yeah, to fight. Pula grabs the watermelon baskets, but realizes her back has become a lot lighter. Oh, he stole the sword so she can't fight. Why do they want to take out the kid? This is a child. You want to fight the child. I think she can go be punchy punchy character though, so we'll be fine. She says, huh, why does that sword on his back look so familiar? Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> that is my sword. <laughs> She's pouting. Oh, well, that's a name, isn't it? Friend one and or two says, brother Simpy. I got it. <laughs> what kind of name? I'm sorry. Simpy. Can't write that. You can't write that. I can't make that up. Oh, friend number three is Simpy. Interesting. Anyways, he says, Birdie's got it. Let's run. So Birdie is probably number one, I'm thinking. Not on my watch. I will. What if we chuck watermelons at them? Like, they're robots, so I don't think it would hurt them. However, I do think it would at least throw them off guard. And watermelons, they're like a juicy fruit, right? So if you throw it at the robot, it'll start short circuiting. <laughs> Pulau says, hey, stop. I'll stop if you stop. That's what I want. <laughs> Wait, recover your weapon and defeat the enemies. Get back here. Oh, okay, get back here. I'm literally losing them. What the heck? This is so fun though. Why can't I move? It like delayed for a second. <laughs> Give me. There we go. Look at that grapple. It's a trick. The sword is not on him. So this wasn't birdie. Oh, we have two ways we can go. I'm going to go this way. I think I got the right one, right? Is this the right one? I'm so confused at this point. Let me move. I do wonder if there's like a timed element to this. Unsure. It looks like they're converging here. Maybe. Did I get the one with the sword? I don't have the sword. Doughy. This one is doughy. Okay, I went the wrong way. Solid. I have to find this guy and um, I'm going a lot slower than I would like. Oh, look at that. Sick. He doesn't have the sword though. Oh, but this guy does. Oh, it's Simpy. 
What are you doing? Give my master's sword back. Oh, she doesn't even care that she's not, like, she's off guard. She doesn't have a weapon. She cares because it's her master's sword and her master's dying. Oh, my God. Simpy says, I'm doing this for the sake of everyone. We would show no mercy if you don't stop. What is that supposed to mean? We're trying to take out the punishing virus. Bro, what? Let me add it. I have a sword, but not the master's sword, I guess. I got hit. Oh my God, what the heck? Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with this? I guess just take it slow, do evasions when I can. Yeah, no, it's just take it slow, do evasions when available. Oh, it's just a Musashi unit? What the heck? Oh, let her get up, let her get up. Yeah, okay, we did something right. Hit it. I have a three ping. Oh, I have another uh, charge attack. All right, all right. Little extra there on the, oh, okay. You know, I was behind you. Um, I don't think that should count as a hit. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Did we do it? Okay, almost, almost, almost. Just let keep going. Go stupid, go crazy. Okay, he's down, he's down. Times 10, we can do this. Such an easy fight, literally easy. Look at that, got a multiple three pings in a row. I got this. Okay, now we're talking. I am a master of dodging if my I can keep my mouse on the right screen. Um, yes, this is so good. Okay, once you get the rhythm down on Pulau, she's good. I think she's better with single target opponents though, which is all right. She is melee, I would say, like more of a melee fighter. So that makes sense. But she's really good on single target. I think I wouldn't bring her in for, oh, <laughs> did we just throw him? Look at her face. She's really good on single target. That was fun. That was really fun. Cause the, her mechanic there is pretty easy to figure out with the single target big guy. Oh, I like that. Pula says, all right. Can you tell me why you suddenly came out and took my sword? At least I didn't try to kill her. I thought they were gonna try to kill her. I'm gonna be honest. I've seen a lot of fantasy media in my day. Simpy says, are you willing to listen? I can't get over that. The fact that his name is Simpy. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like a play on words with simple, um, but it's so funny. <laughs> Pula says, of course, we don't even know each other. There must be a reason behind this. It's a stupid reason probably. The last thing I want is to bring others trouble without realizing it. Oh. This <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> All right, Simpy says, okay. I can't stop you going for the big fish by force anyway. I mean, you were gonna try. Simpy looks at Pulau's gigantic sword in gulps. I guess we have it back now. He says, the search for big fish will only bring misfortune to everyone around you. You must not do it. What is, but we're going for a cure. Is it not gonna work? What happens then? Simpy takes out a half empty pack of cigarettes. Stay safe, y'all. The surface of the paper case has yellowed with age but it's still very clean. Also, how would a robot or android smoke? Wouldn't it just explode? Cause I mean, huh, how would that work? Don't smoke, stay safe y'all. Anyways, when looking closely, Pula sees an old photo attached inside the case. In the photo are Simpy and another woman whose face can hardly be recognized. Oh, he's gone through that same thing. Maybe he's gone to look for the big fish before and now he like is disgruntled. He lights up one cigarette and inhales with a lot of power and sentiment. This like, do to do music is so not fitting. We have like the disgruntled, old, aged robot smoking a cigarette. Like these these scenes don't match. When the smoke disappears in the air, Simpy takes a deep breath. Stay safe, y'all. <laughs> Birdie says, "Oh, smoking is bad for health. Don't ever learn it." You know, he said, "Stay safe, y'all." He really did. Pula says, "I won't." Oh, now we have a music change. I think I hear nothing now. Oh, there's definitely a, it's more like ambient noise. Simpy says, back then I was young, weak, and always bullied at school. Did he go looking for the big fish for a different reason? Not to heal, but for like confidence or something or protection? He says, one day when the gangsters blackmailed me again, May saved me. Who's May? Oh, is that the woman in the photo? She drove away the bullies and gave me her handkerchief to clean my wounds. I saw her smile sparkling in the sun. It must be what love felt like, I thought. Oh, this is deep now, um, sir. Oh, did she get sick and he wanted to save her? Oh, oh, now we have another music change. Oh, for Birdie. Okay, okay, Birdie says, brother always said it was love at first sight. Birdie, go sit in the corner. We're having a conversation. Let, the, let us talk. I was going to say let the adults talk, but Pula was also a child. So back to Birdie. He says, I still think that love at first sight. <laughs> Birdie, Birdie, go sit in the corner. I'm going to censor this. <laughs> yeah, ahem, nothing. Yeah, Birdie, go, go sit in the corner. Go sit in the corner, Birdie. But back to our story here with Simpy, he says, I had been watching her in secret ever since. 
In the morning, I would put her favorite snack inside her desk. Oh, so they were like students at the time. Before her cleaning duty session, I would help her to finish all the work. During exams, I would carelessly show her my complete answers. Ah, a smart guy. You know, I think that during the, the careless, carelessly showing right answer thing, I've been there. I've done that. Not personally, I haven't done it. But I've had people do it to me. It's really nice. Especially when you're a little bit stupid. Admirable. I think out of all the things he's done, that's the best one. And Pulo asks, did she really need that? Well, it doesn't matter if she needed it or not, but he was there to try and like repay that help that he she gave her him. Yeah, Simpy says it doesn't matter. That okay, you know what? That's really funny that his name is Simpy now. Um, because he was simping for this girl. Interesting. <laughs> maybe it's not just supposed to be a play on words with the word simple. You know, maybe. Anyways, what matters is that I must do everything I could to show my love. Simpy? I think we need to have a talk. <laughs> she was so beautiful, like a son that warmed me up with everything she said or did. I don't think it's a play on words. I think it's a play on words, but different word, you know? Simpy curls his arm to showcase his strong biceps. Simpy, you're a robot. He says, I trained hard so I could protect her. I kind of have to side with Pulau now. Did she need that protecting? Like to the degree that you put it to. He says, we had a lot of interactions back then. Everything felt so happy until the cursed big fish stepped into our life, bringing misfortune to everybody. Interesting. So he didn't go seeking out the big fish. It just appeared. Okay. He said, I guess this is a flashback because we did have a scenery change as well. He says, you can always come to me if you are bored. I'll always be there for you. I'll do anything to make you happy. See, now it's getting weird. Now it's getting really creepy. And May says, really? Anything? It looks like we don't even have a model for May. Simpy says, of course. And May says, I heard there was this big fish in the east. His tears are incredibly precious. Oh, so he, I bet May knew that the fish would like mess you up if you interact with it directly. So maybe she sent, like, was she using Simpy? Cause he's, is simping? Or I'm like, so, I'm curious. Simpy says, no problem, leave it to me right away. Was she using him? Oh, this is so messy. Cause everyone's like in the wrong here. He says, storm, landslide, stranded in the wilderness, hunger. I went through many obstacles and finally found the big fish, but it was all too late when I finally returned with his tear. May's house was empty. Her neighbors said she married one of the guys who used to bully me and moved to another city. I mean, I can see this from both sides. It was a setup for Simpy um, and he was devastated and he still thinks I guess he had a chance with May even after that. But the thing is, she might have used that because this is could, the thing is, the th difference the only difference between a lot of love stories and horror movies is the music you put in the background so like in this case scenario we're seeing it from simpy's point of view but like it could have been really creepy for may and so she did something to get him off his off her trail and bolted <laughs> so i can see both sides of the story but i don't know it, this is like literally if babylonia had read it <laughs> this would be an emma <laughs> post <laughs> because it's like what do you what do you do there's two sides and they both like are they both <laughs> holes maybe but which one had the better reason for being an asshole? No matter what I sent, she never replied again. Yeah, no, like, what was the reason? <laughs> Brother Simpy, Birdie, go sit down in the corner, Birdie. Go, go. We're having a conversation, Birdie. Pula says, sorry to bring back your unpleasant memories, but it has nothing to do with Mr. Big Fish, I'm afraid. That's fair, because it's not like he caused that. This was planned. It was premeditated that May was going to send simpy out on this mission and went by the time he came back she'd be gone and simpy says how could you say that if i didn't look for that big fish maybe i wouldn't lose my love she didn't love you though she was helping you out because she's a good person but well she was kind of a good person um she did marry this dude's bully but like why was he being like was it bullying or was it was it hey bro you're a little weird and it's kind of like, was it more of like a, a check, like a health check, you know? Like, what was it? We're missing context. We're missing a lot of context here. Okay. Simpy says, it's all the big fish's fault. Without May, my life was a mess, bro. Move on. She didn't like you. She just helped you out. I finally learned this after getting drunk many times. <laughs> Stay safe, y'all. Don't get that drunk, please. He says, you must not look for the big fish. It will bring misfortune. I don't... Because again, it's like our last chance or Pulau's last chance to save her master. So either way, he's going to die. Might as well give it a shot. Pulau says, aren't you just lying to yourself? Yeah, I think he is a little bit, but I think he's always been lying to himself in one way or another. I just I think he needs therapy. I really do. I think he has a lot of a lot of issues going on right now um, that are just piling on. And I think he do we have robot therapy in Babylonia? I think he needs it. 
he's just confused. Yeah, no. Um, Pulaf says, because your eyelid is twitching a lot when you mention the big fish. It seems that you're very nervous and trying to hide the truth. Oh, so he just lied. Bro just lied. Birdie says, shut up. Birdie, corner now, please. Corner. Birdie and a few others quickly rush to Pulau and cover her mouth, trying to stop her from exposing the truth. Oh, so he was just lying. Straight up. And Pulau bites their fingers. You know what? Aren't they robots, though? Do they have, like, fleshy fingers? That's weird. It's kind of disgusting. Because, like, how would you... Like, that would break your teeth, wouldn't it? Do I just have sensitive teeth? How, how hard did she bite down on this thing? Because he says, ouch. Is it not like a metal finger? Are they fleshy? I can't see this, this guy's hands. Does he have hands? I'm assuming he does. Pulau does not back down. She bites Birdie's hand hard, almost making him jump in pain. She says, you are only running away from the truth. You blame it on something else so you can feel better. I mean, she makes a good point. And Simpy says, love is a complicated thing. What can you possibly understand? She loves her master and wants to save her master. It's not like romantic love, but it's like familial love at this point. Pulau says, I'm young and have never dated anyone. Good, you don't need to. Ke Pulau, you're fine. She says, but I think what you had was not a healthy relationship. It wasn't. It wasn't even a relationship. It was one-sided and kind of creepy. <laughs> what I learned from many people's experiences was that love should be mutual instead of one-sided giving, like what you did. Yeah, and she was using you with that one-sided giving. Sibi says, impossible. I could feel my heart pounding when I did those things for her. If it wasn't, if it wasn't love, what could it be? All those feelings, the song I played in the rain on her birthday night, the pack of cigarettes that she left me, what are they? It was her using you. You were being gaslit, sir. Oh, and Pulau says, could it be that you were just doing those things to make yourself feel better? I don't know. You. Pulau, we might want to run. Like, why are we still here? Honestly. Birdie says, oh my gosh, did you really say it all out? <laughs> Birdie. Birdie, the peanut gallery is not needed here. Pulau says, I guess that's why onlookers can see most of the game. Oh. Uncle Birdie and others must have figured it out long ago. They never told you because they didn't want to hurt you. That, see, that's the thing. Sometimes you need friends that will protect you in that way and not, like, tell you that. But other times, tough love is necessary. You need a friend that will tell you, hey, stop being stupid, stupid, and, like, move on. You need to heal. <laughs> this is also why therapy is, is really helpful, guys. <laughs> I'll say it again. Simpy says, did you all? Yeah, no, they probably did. Birdie, Birdie, corner. Go sit in the corner, Birdie. You're saying no, but you're lying to your boss. Simpy says, tell me the truth. Yeah. Birdie says, brother Simpy, now that she has said everything, we'll be frank too. Your affection meant a lot to you, but such twisted love isn't worth it. Yeah. They were both, honestly, going back to the am I the asshole analogy, they're both assholes, but in different ways. And I think they both had their reasoning for being assholes. But like some people just don't work together. Some people can be in a relationship and it's just a toxic relationship all the time. And I think that's what happened here, honestly. Pulau says, you should be well aware of May's true feelings, true feelings towards you. Wow, I can't talk. May had left long ago, but these friends have been staying with you all along. They couldn't tell you the truth because they didn't want to hurt you. Are they more important? Ah, uh, and Simpy says, no. May didn't do anything, didn't, didn't do anything wrong. It was, and she, he's going to tr keep trying to blame the big fish, but he's like in denial at this point. Birdie just says, brother, <laughs> what's going on? No words? Oh, Birdie says, be nice to yourself. Can you? What do you mean by that? Elaborate, Birdie. Sorry, he says. I was too loud. Simpy just says, it's fine. Birdie and a few others grab the pack of cigarettes from Simpy. Each of them take out a cigarette and light it up, standing in a circle. They leave one spot for Simpy. You know, stay safe, y'all, but they're having a moment. Robo bro bond. Robo bond. Oh my god. <laughs> they pass the last cigarette along with the case back to Simpy's hand. He looks at them and Pulau. That's the thing. Pulau is literally just helping so many people as she goes along on this little journey. Oh, it definitely feels like some sort of myth, like a or like fairy tale sort of scenario, which means I feel like the ending's gonna be really bad. Pulau says, "See, they are waiting for you." Yeah, she helped these guys. Bird, Birdie, Doughy, and Goldie. Ah, Simpy says, "Sorry." After so many years, no matter how much I have changed outside. I'm still that coward inside. Healing takes a long time and it's not linear. One day you can be fine, one day you're not. And you know what? He just needs to heal and that's it. And he has a, a seemingly good support network of friends by his side. I think he'll be okay. I think he will. Without a target, without you, 
I lose the courage to move on. Yeah, see, just lean on your friends a little bit, Simpy. It's okay. Yeah, Birdie says, it's okay. We are all the same. Some may laugh at us, saying we can't get anywhere without friends. Yeah, but so what? At least we are still going forward. At least we still have each other. You know, that's the thing, though. Humans are like, and um, humans refers to the sentient robot beings as well. They're the social creatures. Like, you need human interaction on a daily basis, whether that be friends, family, just some random on the street. You need some sort of human interaction. And the more supportive that interaction is to, like, family, friends, the better. So, yeah, if you need friends to go forward, so be it. As long as you are going forward. What's the Meet the Robinsons thing? Keep moving forward? Yeah, that's all that matters. So what? Yeah. <laughs> Simpy's just like, guys! Birdie says we are always here for you. Yeah, see? Yes. Just yes. Simpy wipes the tear from his eyes. He takes out the last- he has eyes? Simpy, where are the eyes? Anyways, takes out the last cigarette, tosses the case away, because it's the case from May, and steps forward, filling the last spot in the circle. Oh. He says, thanks for messing around with me all these years. Oh, and Birdie says, guess we're just stuck with you. Oh, cute. And Fulao says, this feels a little weird. She's like, I'm intruding on something. And they just go from one extreme to another. It's because they're here for co comedic relief, I believe. God, this one part is taking me 40 minutes to get through. Back to Pulau. Well, as long as they are happy, I need to keep going. Simpy says, you there. Is he going to help us? He's going to give us something, isn't he? Pulao says, huh, are you still going to stop me from finding Mr. Big Fish? No, he's probably going to wish us luck. Simpy says, no, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, you made me realize there's something more important than love. Oh, it's still love, but it's like friend love. That's a thing. I forget the actual word for it. Because I think it was the Greeks or like in Latin or something had like eight different kinds of love or something. One of them is friendship, one of them is family, then there's like romantic love. It, there, I think there's like multiple different kinds of romantic love, actually. Um, but yeah, there's different types of love. Simpy says, when you arrive at the dock, just take a ship that heads to the east. After getting off the ship, walk to the north for half a day and you'll see the big fish. Oh, we wasted quite some time. All the sailors have gone home now. To make it up, let's take you around the city tonight. I'll drop you off at the dock first thing in the morning tomorrow. How's that? Oh. Is she going to do it? Because that's also kind of weird. Ahem. Yes. Simpy has already taken out his terminal, lifting it high up. He stands under the dragon child pillar and shouts. Oh, is he doing like a video call? He says, hello, everybody. I have something to announce. I'm sorry for all the troubles I brought all these years. Oh, the first step to healing is admitting you have a problem. He admitted he has a problem. Look at him. Look at him go. Simpy screams at the top of his voice. Sometimes you just gotta scream, let it out, you know? He says, I'd like to apologize to everyone and to our guest here who has traveled far to get here. I didn't read that right, but you got the just gist of it. He says, let's party tonight. We will pay for everything. Civilian A. Oh, is this like a broadcast to the city? Really? Coming, coming. Hooray. Hearing the news, the civilians rush out from their houses, cheering and crowding the already narrow alleys. Simpy says, look, you can't go without a ship. Just stay for the night and enjoy the hospitality from us. That's the thing, though. I'm afraid something's going to happen at night. Like, not necessarily even involving our fr new friends, but something in the city is going to happen. I don't know. Pulau just says, all right. Okay. Interesting. Can we do another one? Ugh, I want to. I probably should. Because that was 42 minutes, though. All right. Let's do five, at least. Stage five is called Fireworks. Let's hit it. Hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter. It's so pretty here though. Simpy says, can we have another pork knuckle, please? Oh, they're gonna, they're having food. I want food. I didn't have lunch before this. That was a mistake. Pulau says, no need. There are already so many dishes and we haven't finished them. Uh, just eat the dishes you have, bro. Simpy says, don't worry, just eat. You're still growing. One pot of Osmanthus wine, please. Wow, where have I heard that one before? <laughs> Civilian A says, man, that's not good. You have a kid there. So she's not drinking it. Okay, fine. He says, my bad. No drinking today. Stay safe, y'all. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we swap the Osmanthus wine for juice? <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, it's kind of wholesome that they're like making her feel involved. The shop owner says, coming right up. And the shop owner walks out from the kitchen holding multiple plates. The performers have already started their show as diners dig into their food and wine. And there's a bang. Oh, thank God, it's fireworks. I forgot the stage was called fireworks for a second. I was like, oh my God, what is going on? This is, I was waiting for the shoe to drop. Pula says, this is so pretty. Oh, fireworks explode in the night sky and excite the crowd. 
bringing the celebration to a climax. Under the fireworks, mechanical actresses step onto the stage, following the beat. Their dazzling performance has lots of applause from the audience. It is Pula's first time in this city, but somehow she feels a little familiar as she watches the performance. Yeah, no, this is gonna make her remember things, I bet. Cause she keeps talking about, and or the story keeps talking about how she's finding these things familiar. We're gonna get to a point where we just like, it hits everything, it's the fan. Simpy says, all right, my turn. With what? Oh, ooh, Simpy. He pulls out his sword, then jumps onto the stage to join the other performers. Their blades collide with one another as they dance, rhyming with the music. When he finishes a song, he invites Pulau to also come to the stage. Aww. It's a, like an experience she won't be able to forget, right? He just doesn't want to join in. Pulau is just, but I. And the civilians are cheering her on. Birdie says, it's okay. Don't be shy. Good opportunity to show them how good you are. Yeah, no. Um, do I have to? Oh, that, this, this must be how we're fighting. That's good. It's not like too heavy yet <laughs> something everything like when is the shoe going to drop that's what scares me now because we've had two instances now where it's like you're just waiting for something to happen because everything's kind of suspicious and then it's like but oh actually this is nice what's going on here birdie says i'm sure it'll be an unforgettable memory and pula says all right then here i come here's the we fight yes yes yep there we go should be a pretty quick stage. I do think something might happen at the end of the stage. A flexile and simulacrous something. Th thusly it cometh and goeth. Uh, what should I do? Yes, um, I can't read big words that fast. Simpy says, just follow your battle instinct. Our puppets here are professional. They will act accordingly. And Pula says, okay, I'll give it a try. How transient it it's flutter. I'm gonna try to read it. Rise. The civilians are saying that actually. Wah, wah. I'm not hitting anything, am I? Oh, I kind of am the ball wheel. I kind of just have to follow it, right? Is that the deal? Is the deal just to follow and not get hit? Don't get hit, five head. I got this. I still got this. Oh, I shouldn't have hit that three, that two yellow pink because a uh, third one popped up and I have a red three pink. Um, I'm on the ground for some reason. Why can't I hit anything? Thank God we got something. These ball wheels are so beefy as well. I kind of hate it. Also, I missed when they were moving around. That was kind of fun. Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Also, pull out. Come on, girly, please. We need to, we can't die here. Oh, why does she keep getting, girl, I'm struggling. Oh, I revived. I forget that they revive you if you die. This is so rough. Like my hands actually hurt. Thanks, ball wheels. I really love showing my skills off and just getting murdered because it did happen. Really, really guys, really? What is going on? I hate ball wheel. I hate ball wheel so much. Why do these ball wheels suck? I'm just kind of like hitting and doing an evade sort of thing. Yeah, Pulau is really good with single target hit opponents. I'm so tired, but multi-target, not as much. Not as much with the multi-target. Thank God we're done. The civilians say, wow, that's amazing. That sucked. Simpy says you're getting more and more used to it. Time for the climax of the performance. Thousands of lights, dance of two dragons. There's more? Rise. Oh, it's the hanged man, isn't it? Oh, I don't like that. Where are you guys? Oh, and they're gonna like piece in and out, aren't they? Oh, I hate it. Thanks guys, thank you. Can I hit anything? It's my one thing. Sometimes like I love the combat style in PGR and how fast it is, but when you get hit, you are down. You are down for extended periods of time. You cannot do a thing. Am I fat fingering on the wrong keys? Hey, where are you guys? I have a three ping waiting for you, please. Yeah, it's the hanged man. I've now been revived twice. Can I just go over here? I don't like being in corners, okay? Yes, thanks. Hitting that, I don't like this. I'm not having a good time. It's gave me like one of my least favorite. I don't like a lot of the opponents in this game. I like just hitting buttons and nothing happens. <laughs> Am I balding? Am I balding with the child? I hit my ult and none of these dudes are on the field. Are you joking? Are you joking? I thought this would be easy because it's like, oh, it's just a little performance. Wow, it can't be that bad. No, this sucks. I'm, what if I just lay here? Literally, what if I just lay here? What are you gonna do? This one's are still times four. Okay, that's my, I think my third revive. I hate the hanged man. This is literally one of my least favorite opponents. He's like hanged man, polar soldier, ball wheel, those rabbits, shark spear. You can literally name them. Thanks guys. I bet there's a way you can animation cancel when you're knocked out, but I don't know it. You think I know it? Yeah, hit me, just, just hit me. I'm gonna, what if I just sit, stand here? What if I just stand here? Well, I guess because the regulations or stipulations for clearing this stage are don't die and you literally can't die. 
<laughs> won't let me hit. The thing is they keep appearing and disappearing. And it's like, wh what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, thank God one of them is out. I wish I knew how many there was, because I'm so tired. It is midday and these guys just I, made me so tired. I need food after this. Did I hit no one? Because they just keep piecing in and out. And it's like, can you not keep leaving? Also, if we had more than one character, this would be so much easier, but we literally only have Pulau. Thank you. There we go. How did you get over there, sir? Also, I've been doing this one fight for six minutes. Obviously, there's not like a time limit on it, but still, where are you? This might take out this one thing. Oh, please, please. Okay, one more, one more. Why won't... No, they're both still alive. Why are they stuck? What do you mean they're both still alive? Just end my suffering. Why won't this finish? What the heck? 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 How many times do I have to hit a three ping for it to work? Please free me. Why am I still here? What do I have to do for this to finish? I'm stuck at one times one. I died again. Do I just have to do this for 10 minutes? What is the goal here? Oh, that's the goal. Interesting. Um, I'm free, finally. Oh, that's sick. Look at that, she's on his sword. Or is that her sword? I can't really tell. Oh, there she goes. Go Pulau. <laughs> she is really good at this. Tiny sword. <laughs> you know, it's almost just like a sword dance of sorts. There she goes. <laughs> and she has oh that's so dragons oh they're dragons because that's her thing oh that is, this is animated beautifully she remembered something i bet oh cute was my game glitching it might have been that might have been what got us i think we're only gonna do two in this video because this took a very long time so this old man comes up to us and says, what a fantastic performance. Old man, wait, who's the old man? Okay, Pula says, you're here too. As Pula walks off the stage, she sees the old man selling her the prune drink earlier in the day. Oh, that's cute actually. His eyes are half closed, gazing at the city in the night. Oh, the old man says, see, these are our people. This is our city, prosperous like a dream. Something's gonna happen, I bet, that's foreshadowing. If we can't capture the passion and emotions, they will disappear in the very next moment. Oh, that's gonna come back too. Whenever an old man says something in some sort of story, you just gotta listen to what they say because usually it'll come back. Any old person, really. The old man says they really like you. <laughs> Pulas just says, oh, really? Yeah. The old man says, have you thought about living here after everything? I mean, it might be nice. Life here is neither too busy nor too slow, but I think she lived here before, like to have a little aside i think she did live here before and had to leave for a reason you know like there's a reason she left there are little troubles occasionally but soon they will be resolved there won't be too many changes so you won't be disappointed a little surprise could bring about a celebration just like your arrival that's the thing though if it's like that perfect something's up you know something's that has to be up pula says honestly i don't even know what to do with myself or what to do myself okay I think she, it depends on wh what she go, what she comes back to after getting the big fish tear. Where do like what happens when she gets home? Is her master still there? Will it work? Because it might be good. Well, I don't think her master could probably make this journey with her, but it might be good to be in a big city because you might be able to find somebody who can at least heal him slightly. <laughs> Anyways, the old man says that's okay. You have a long way to go, and you have a lot of time to think. I do think once we get on the ship to get to the tier, I think that might be where we stay. The old man says, I heard you were going to the dock in the early morning. Rest early. And the old man takes out his rattle drum and steps into the night, humming some melodies. If he just like fades into the distance, um, that's the uh, red flag. Mm. Pulau can still hear his voice echoing in the summer night after he disappears at the end of the alley. The old man says, you gave us all a sweet dream. Thank you. Oh, cute. So now we have the morning. Yeah, we're definitely not doing anything more than this uh, scene in this video. It is a drowsy morning. Pula wakes up in a soft place. Oh my god, my eye. Something's in my eye all of a sudden. Um, hold on. Then I need a break to um rub my eye profusely. Anyways, Pula wakes up in a soft place. Yes. They, give, get, they probably gave her a hotel room. Oh, the familiar room somehow has lost all its colors. Only black and white remain. Cause she even even the room is familiar. 
Strangely, Pulau does not feel unusual, but has naturally accepted everything. What does that mean? Have we got on a time jump again? A few silhouettes, who appear to be Simpy and his friends, are already waiting outside. Pulau smiles and greets them, and then boards the earliest ship. Oh. Just like Simpy said, it didn't take long for Pulau to reach the destination. It feels like she has only taken one step to get to the end of the road. The old man said we had a long journey, though. What does the old man know? Interesting. In front of her is a turbulent but silent blue ocean. She puts down her backpack and looks around, shouting to the sky with her hands around her mouth. <laughs> Mr. Big Fish! <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? She can only hear cold echoes. You know, if you even look at this, it's so desaturated. Now there's some flowers down here that are colorful, but like this is so desaturated that it's like, oh no, something's about to happen. Pulau is anxious but cannot do anything. Unable to find the big fish, she can only return to the town, awaiting the next ship out. Oh, Simpy and her friends give her a warm welcome. They even put up another carnival, but she's sad because she like failed, I guess. She thinks she failed, but she helped so many people. She helped so many people along the way that I don't think she failed at all. She finds nothing on her second voyage. Oh, the old man helps Pulau to find a dwelling in town. She is prepared for many more trips. Maybe she's afraid to go back without having the tear. She finds nothing on her third voyage. The fourth, fifth, Pula has lost track of how many times she has failed. Is this why? Because I know there is an event I did. Um, it might have been the New Year's event where we meet Pula on a ship and she has like this big ship and I don't know, remember if she runs the ship or not, but maybe, yeah, this is where, this is how she gets there. All her effort only result in disappointment. Waking up, getting on the ship, looking for the big fish, and coming back with no luck. These repetitive, how do you say that? Repetuitous? Repetuitous? Okay, that sounds like, it's like on and on and on, monotonous daily tasks, yeah. These repetuitous daily routines have almost taken up Pulau's entire life. Oh, she's like obsessed. This invariable cycle is slowly eroding her resolution and passion. Yeah, I mean, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again with no results, that's it's gonna do that. It's like the definition of insanity, even. Pula has also tried some folk remedies to heal Master, or gone somewhere else to look for the big fish. But no matter what she does, she cannot find a second solution to save Master's life. Has she gone back and forth then? Because she says she's tried other remedies. Or was that prior to this journey? Because that was a long journey she made just to get here. What if she still cannot find the big fish's tear tomorrow? What will happen to Master? Yeah. Every night, Pulau can only fall asleep with worry and anxiety. Still, she holds onto the hope that one day, a miracle will happen. I feel like the last event I saw her in as well, she was very like angry or like just stressed and, and that makes sense now. Pulau has lost track of how long has passed. One night, she has a dream. In her dream, she finally finds the big fish. Is it the end or, Oh, She says, Mr. Big Fish, I finally found you. Can I get some tears, please? I need it to save a life. Oh, there's our big fish. Just we have the whole whale. <laughs> he doesn't say anything though. But big fish doesn't reply. Mr. Big Fish, where are you going? Oh, he just leaves. Well, that's uh, so great. Big fish never responds, but moves further away. Oh, because it's a dream. It just kind of probably backs up menacingly and Pulau can't get closer no matter how hard she, yeah. No matter how Pulau tries to catch up, she cannot stop him from leaving. Yeah. It's like those dreams where you're just running. All that is is running or like falling, you know? Pulo says, what am I going to do without you, Master Will? And the big fish never replies in the end. Pulo feels her body getting lighter and lighter. Oh, so it is a falling dream, isn't it? Huh? Oh! The big fish, the dock, the town, and even the soil under her feet are drawing away. Or is it like a drowning dream? Because it sounds like water. <laughs> There's like ambient water noises. After that, everything disappears. Only the sounds of whales can be heard instead. Big fish? Yeah. No, they aren't. But a whale is a big fish. It is a fish. The whales approach Pulau, overwhelming her world. Are whales one of those only sea animals that are mammals though? I don't know. Put a pin in that. They might not be a fish. Yeah, whales approach, overwhelming her world. Thus, her story has come to an end. But we have more stages. Oh, she wakes up screaming. Great. Awesome. Pula wakes up in the hotel and immediately checks the time on her terminal. She lets out a sigh of relief after confirming the celebration only took place last night. Oh, it was all one big nightmare. Okay, that's good. That's actually really good because 
this would have, uh, I don't think her master would have been alive. That kind of clears up the timeline there, though. I was like, has she gone back to check on her master? In the dream, I guess she did. Phew! Thank goodness, she says. It was just a dream. And Simpy says, are you okay? You were screaming quite loud because she was having one of the drowning dreams. Those are terrifying. Actually, I don't think I've ever had one. At least that I can remember. I've had other terrifying dreams, though. Don't go there. I don't want to talk about that one. She says, oh, I'm fine. Don't worry. It is really nice when you wake up from a nightmare, though, and it's it's just a, it's just a dream. Nothing more. Like, you can be like, okay, that's going to bother me for a couple hours now, Um, but it's not real, so it's okay. Birdie says, good, we need to go now. The first ship is about to set sail. Are they going with her? Pula says, all right, I'll be there in a second. She replies loudly and pats at her own chest. It's okay, don't worry. It was all just a dream. I will find you, Mr. Big Fish. And that's the end. So that was fireworks. We will get on with the end of the bit in the next two stages. I would go to get all the reward requirements to get finish off that second chunk. Actually, this might just be a battle stage. Reunion. Oh, it's a story stage. So we're not fighting at all in this one, I think. What happens now is just like what happened in the past. Oh, that's going to be big. We will start with reunion in the next one just because one, this has been a little bit long and two, that's the story stages like can get really long because it's just story. I do remember that. So um, I can do quite a bit right now. Let me grab battle pass really quickly. And then let me grab dorm stuff because we are going to do a poll. I did say we would do a poll and we're going to do a poll. I can probably do some decor stuff, but I did my dorm stuff for the day. So I'm just going to leave it. What can I do here? What does it want me to do? It wants me to promote, promote Nanami. I can't talk anymore. Gosh. Okay. So Nanami is promoted. Next, we are going to do a singular poll on research and development for Pulau. I'm not going to build her today, but eventually. Yeah, she is just a physical uniframe. So we hit the button, do the thing, and research. Our one poll in this video, slowly but surely, we do a poll. It's purple. I, mm -mm. Yep, it's Matt's overclock Aloy. Great. <laughs> ah, that sucks. It's fine. We're only at four out of 10. You know, we'll get it. We have until May 6th. Uh, obviously, this is going up after May 6th. So the current me knows if I have Pulau or not, but the me who is recording this video on April 9th <laughs> does not know. We'll get her eventually. I'm not worried. We still have so many events, things to go through. Like we're still on Reveries with a Whale. We have Night Mayfly. We have a lot of other stuff. I'll be, we haven't even gotten to the stuff over here. I haven't done more of Devour Wave Escape. We will get Pulau. It's not a big deal. There's plenty of opportunities to grab more rewards, but for today, that is going to be it. If you like this video, make sure to give me a like down below as well as subscribe for more and click the little notification bell to be notified when I upload new ones. As always, I hope everyone had or is having a super lovely day wherever you are in the world and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!